Hey guys, it's Gogo here, and I just want to welcome you to the very first episode of uh, Cold Fusion for the year. If you're new here, you might as well subscribe because I'm pretty sure that you're not going to regret it and you'll enjoy yourself, and you might as well check out some other older videos as well. So, uh, without further ado, here's the first video. Enjoy, guys. You are watching Cold Fusion TV. Mobile gaming has certainly improved over the years, but it's always been a world away from consoles and PCs. But that ends this year. What if I told you that it's technically possible to play PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One games on a mobile chip in a mobile device? It sounds like I'm completely mad. Well, just watch. It all starts with Nvidia, a real dark horse in this case. For years, Nvidia has always been trailing behind in the mobile tech space. Tegra 2 was woefully underpowered, and Tegra 3 was outdated on release because it used a one-year-old die process. Investors got nervous, and it was clear that Nvidia needed to go back to the drawing board to avoid being left behind completely. The answer? The Tegra K1, with 192 GPU cores. It's set to change the way we think about mobile gaming. So what, you may think? What does this mean for me? Throughout the course of this short video, you'll learn a lot about what this chip is, and the significant implications it carries. Firstly, here's the state of the art. The best mobile chip money can buy at the moment can render this in real time. This is where we are right now. Nvidia has gone far beyond today, providing next-gen graphics. Here's how it looks. Let's do it again. The current state of the art, and Nvidia's next-gen Tegra K1 chip. Okay, so there's a few things going on, namely OpenGL 4.4 and Unreal Engine 4. This is by far the biggest thing to happen in mobile gaming in its entire history. This is just a brief taste and you'll see more games and demos later in the episode. Unreal Engine 4 controls more than just graphics. You can think of it as an operating system for games. The character AI, physics and the whole package of realism is all intertwined in the game engine. Big deal, right? Well, consider this. Unreal Engine 4 is a current gen engine. So from the Xbox One to the PS4 to your PC, all of these machines use this very same engine in some of their games. Let's hear a bit from Nvidia CEO Jensen Huang. One singular architecture, all compatible, is now able to span computing from a few watts all the way to megawatts. We've brought mobile computing to the same level as desktop computing. We've brought mobile computing to the same level as supercomputing. That last statement really sounds ridiculous, but technically, he's correct. This very same chip can be used in anything from a phone to a supercomputer. The supercomputer would just have more of them. Welcome to fully scalable technology, my friends. If you're still unsure of what this actually means for gaming, here's another quote. This one certainly knocked me out of my chair. We can take absolutely anything that runs on PC or high-end console and run it on Tegra. I didn't think we'd be at this level on mobile for another three to four years. I didn't say it, it was the founder of Epic Games himself that said it. To quickly make sense of that statement, there was a brilliant graphic that was used in Nvidia's presentation. Basically, it took eight years for a mobile device to achieve the graphics of a 2002 PC. This was Unreal Engine 3, and the first mobile device to use Unreal Engine 3 was the iPad with Infinity Blade. Now it's come to the point where it's only taken two years to achieve 2012 graphics in a mobile device. Now, I hope you see the full picture. So everything that you're going to see from now on is all generated from the NVIDIA Tegra K1 chipset. I'll let this tech demo and gameplay footage run in the background while I tell you a bit about the chip. The Tegra one will come in two flavours. Providing there's no delays, this is the game plan. Within the first half of 2014, there will be one version with four ARM Cortex-A15 cores and one companion core, and then there will be a second version, which is an absolute screamer. Get this. It's a dual-core 64-bit chip, codenamed Denver. Denver is capable of decoding 7 instructions per clock cycle. Normal CPUs decode 1, 2 or 3 if you're lucky, but 7 is just ridiculous. 
The two cores are going to be custom cores made by NVIDIA based off the ARM V8 architecture. I'm really trying to cut out the jargon in this video so I'll leave it at that but it's basically going to be a giant leap above anything we've come across in the mobile industry. Other benefits, an absolute huge gain in advanced physics simulation, particle effects, lighting systems and a lot more. It's actually said to blow last gen game consoles out of the water. It obviously goes without saying that PCs and high-end consoles are still much more powerful. The bottom line is that for the first time, all platforms can share a common game engine. It's very reasonable to think that mobile technology will never get up to the graphic standards of PCs and modern game consoles, but this attitude is quite reminiscent of those that said that the motor car will never overtake the horse and carriage. Saying never means that there's a 0% chance of that event happening, and that's probably not the smartest thing to say in this situation. So I know the question that a lot of you have. Look, this all sounds great, but how will this actually perform within real gameplay with a bunch of explosions and things happening? I'm going to be honest, and right now I'll say that it's probably going to lag. And as you can see in the footage now, there is a bit of frame rate stutter. But it's like anything. The first handful of times a new technology is tried and developed, it's far from perfect. It's the very nature of progress. But slowly and surely, we start to get things right. We improve, and eventually, the end result is a far cry from what we started with. Right now, we're at the very infancy of mobile computing. What we have today will be looked at in the future as the first pioneering steps, perhaps to convergence or perhaps to something else. And just think, in 2015, if this mobile graphics power doubles, which is the prediction, a lot of people might have to accept the fact that next generation mobile has arrived. So hopefully if the developers and Nvidia hold true and don't drop the ball on this one, we're in for some very exciting entertainment next year. This has been Cole Fuston, and thank you for watching the whole way through. As you may have noticed, I actually don't really have that many subscribers, so I'm really trying to work on growing my channel at the moment. So as usual, don't forget to give a thumbs up if you liked it, and if you know someone that's going to be interested in this kind of thing, maybe flick this video across to them. Yeah. Cheers guys, and I'll catch you again for the next one. Cold future. It's me thinking. thinking.